special schools. So our commitment to investing in those schools is there and remains steadfast and strong. Because no, no getting away from it, we have to create the opportunities to get the money to make those investments. So that's what we've done. The capital receipts from those sales have gone in to actually pay for those new schools. And it's the same principle that would apply to Heart Hill Road. Hold the kids you hear, not from me, but I've visited the site, I wonder how many others have. I've visited the facility, I wonder how many others have. Call the kids, Beachley Stables, and the Model Railway all need investment. Well, I don't know whether you know this. I really don't. But this council in this city has had a 58% cut in its funding. 340 million taken away. You can mumble at the back, mumble as much as you want, but that's a fact. And we've got to replace or do something about it. So what we're doing with Heart and Road is selling the facilities, the fenced off facilities, that the public can't access, and we're reinvesting that money in new facilities. New facilities for the people that need it. What could be more simple and more honest than that? Than actually ring fencing that money that provides new facilities for them, fit for purpose. And you know the plus side of that, the plus side of that, is we'll get new homes built. That means we get more revenue in to try to protect the services that are being cut by a Tory administration in London. That's what's on offer here. And that's why that approach we will continue to make. And I remember the councillors in opposition in this uh, chamber and some of the people at the back and some of the people in the city when we bought the Cunard building. Oh, God. Uh, well, the Cunard building, we paid 10 million and invested three. It's worth double that now. Double it. Double it and we bring in. 1.4 million pounds in rent a year to spend on adult social care and other things. And when we took it over, it was 20% occupied. When we took over, it was 20% occupied. It's now 80% occupied. With the British Museum of Pop Mover in there. A great tourist road and attraction for our city and a fantastic restaurant going to open downstairs. That's the innovative, creative way a social <coughs> council works to provide money to invest back in our services. And make no mistake about it, let me tell you this, and I told our leader, Jeremy Corbyn, when he was here, I'm proud of leading a socialist council that's built 5,400 homes, built 12 schools, provided money and support for people to get on the housing ladder, a million pounds into our credit union, 400,000 pounds, 400,000 pounds into uh, support to most vulnerable people in this city. And sell box space. Excuse me, Ray Anderson, would you, would you just sit down a moment, please? Could I ask members of the public please to refrain from shouting out? As I explained at the beginning of the meeting, if we're going to conduct ourselves, you know, so that we can discuss and debate what goes on in the city, we need to hear what's going on. But not uh, that's you to, to behave yourself. Debate. Please sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. And please stop shouting out. Oh God, I I'm not shouting out. She's the one who's going out with her friends, went to the Greens, and I think she went out to the kids. Sorry, Lord, 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 I didn't realise it. it, it we, the, the, the fact of the matter is, Lord Mayor, we've said in this motion, and we've said to the city, you know the challenges financially what we face. And this initiative and what we're doing is absolutely the right thing to do because we're defending our people in the city and providing new facilities for our city that the people deserve. And that's why this initiative is the right one to take. We have notice of an amendment by Councillor Kent. Can I ask if it's second? Mm -hmm. Councillor Kent. Mm -hmm.
My Lord Bernard can the, uh, the Mayor of Liverpool is quite right, uh, firstly, to remind the Council of the bigger picture here. We are, of course, everyone in this Council Chamber, and indeed I suspect in the City, is aware of the severe difficulties that this Council, like others, is facing. Even Oxfordshire Council apparently is facing great difficulties, uh, but then the Prime Minister is complaining to that Council about the cuts that's being made to it. But the key question for this Council, in fact there are two, is this. The first is that whether we should deal with a short-term financial problem, short being three or four or five, I'm not saying it's this year or next, a medium-term financial problem, by building on land which, by the very process of building on it, will be lost to the people of Liverpool yeah, yeah, as green yeah. space for the next 200 years. And of course, it will be. The second is whether or not building on our green spaces, as is proposed in sites across the city, will actually destroy the goose that lays the golden eggs. People want to live here, because it's a green and pleasant land. Build on it, and they won't want to come to our city. So let's, uh, let's deal with some of the specifics, and I can understand why the Mayor didn't want to spend a lot of time on the specifics. The idea that the whole of this land isn't Calderstone's Park is farcical. Obviously, one organisation understands there's a heart in this state, but we recognise, and have done for the last 20 years, an organisation called the Friends of Heart Hill and Calderstones Park. Not Heart Hill and Calderstones Parks, Heart Hill and Calderstones Parks. You go and ask a hundred people who live near that park, who use that park, what the park is, and they will say it starts at Heart Hill Road, goes up Hamilton Road to Yew Tree Road and back down Mother Avenue. That's a men of Avenue. That's what they will say. Because to their mind, that is all Calderstones Park, some of which is public open space and some of which is community open space. I've only got 30 seconds left so I can't expand all my arguments. But I would say this, my Lord Mayor. If the Mayor of Liverpool is absolutely confident that he's doing the right thing, why doesn't he leave his bunker, defended by the poor bloody infantry uh, to my right, and come and debate the issues about Calderstones Park in Liverpool 18? Any neutral venue, any neutral chair, I'll be there. And while we're doing it, let's have another meeting about Walton Hall Park. Uh, I will be there. And while we're doing that, let's go to Sefton Park as well. Any neutral uh, venue, any neutral chair, I will debate these issues with the people who live in those areas, with the people who use the park. Because if he thinks he's speaking for the people of Liverpool, he'll have another thing coming. My Lord, may I beg to move? I've got a number of their speakers first. I'll first of all, call on Councillor Webster. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Lord Mayor. No, um, I'd like to speak against the amendment. Um, two reasons. Uh, I'd like to think of two reasons. Firstly, because um, the Hartfield Estate falls in my ward, in church ward. And secondly, I'd like to thank you because this is the first opportunity I've had to address the Council since I was elected in May 2014. Uh, I shan't be shouting at anybody even if. Uh, I'm part of the poor bloody infantry. Um, and, I will, and I will be brief if there are a lot of people to, to speak. Uh, I mean, there is no need for, uh, for this amendment at all, and I believe it should be rejected, and I'll explain why. The main motion is quite clear. It stands perfectly well on its own. It commends to us the vitally important work that's being done by organisations uh, such as Calder Kit, whom I also visited, as uh, Mayor Anderson mentioned, and also similarly the very important work that's done by Beachley Stables. Um, the main motion does not require an amendment. The main motion provides exactly the clarity that's been asked of us by ward residents, and it states quite clearly, quite clearly, no part of Calderstone's Park 
is going to be built on. And I'll say that again because it says it quite clearly. Words mean what words say. No part of Calderstones Park is going to be built on. I don't think there's any ambiguity about that. Nor is any park being flogged off, as the amendment says. So it's such a pity that we just even entertain oh, it using it's... slang terms in, in, uh, in amendments. Um, so why is this amendment here at all? Well, I actually think it's an attempt to justify the nonsense that gets promulgated around the ward by people who should know better, uh, whose <laughs> jaundiced publications, which is the best description of the colour that they are, as well as the time of publication, residents to closely focus on half-truths, innuendo and obfuscation. That's why this amendment has been brought, to butter all that up. Not to mention the sarcastic snipings that are made against elected members in this chamber, some of which you've just heard earlier. One might even question the competence of this amendment because it actually refers to the Hart Hill estate as being habitually used by the community. That is not true. We've just heard from Call the Kids that their part of the estate quite obviously is not habitually used by the community. It is not public green space. And that, again, is an unambiguous statement. It is not public green space. There is no added value in this amendment. It's, it's irrelevant. <coughs> It's a play to the crowds thing, it's a slang thing, it's incompetent, and I urge members to vote against the amendment. Could I also advise uh, the council that that was Council of Edstone's maiden speech, so congratulations. <laughs> Could I ask Councillor Mitchell, please? Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Um, first of all, uh, can I congratulate uh, Councillor Wenson for an excellent, near to say, outstanding uh, opening speech no. to the Council. I love passion. I absolutely love it. So isn't it great when you hear Councillor Ken getting so passionate about green and open spaces? And I will never tire of reminding Councillor Ken in a passionate way about the green and open spaces he created in my end of the city. Yeah. Stonebridge Cross and the Brute Estate. Yeah. Come and see them. Yeah. And I'll declare to the very first line of his amendment, because I'm speaking to his amendment, my Lord Mayor. Therefore, Council believes that all public open space owned by the Council and at Hemsworth should be permanently kept for public use. That would mean the Boot Estate would still be the wasteland that he and his administration had left it instead of the inspirational piece of development that we oh, delivered in five years. <laughs> and I'm actually very passionate about Stormbridge Cross, where people died living in squalor after failed initiative, after failed initiative led by the previous administration. That not only Councillor Kemp uh, and his wife, and of course the previous councillor was part of, but we have built a real park in that area. Oh. And two weeks ago, oh. we got found mission to build new social housing in that area. That green space, according to Councillor Kemp, that we'll never develop. What absolute arrogant nonsense! The reality is that the the reality is. What really gets my goat, as you might have done, <laughs> is the perception that only people from the opposition are passionate about our green spaces. I'm passionate too, you might have noticed. So we will fight to defend our green spaces, our parts in a joined up, really, really positive, innovative way. But well, like that, because we have to make sure this city can protect them. Ignore this nonsense motion and let's move on to the real agenda. Again, can I ask members of the public and also members of the chamber really to address the points that are made and try not to inflame people from both sides. Can I now call on uh, Councillor Lewis, please? Thank you. Uh, Greg Bob Paisley once said that if you want to be heard, speak softly, so we might give that go. 
uh, after a couple of those speeches we've had. Again, congratulations to Councillor Winston uh, for an excellent speech, standing up for his constituents. Uh, it's good to hear that someone in church ward is actually doing that and trying to fight through some of the nonsense that's being distributed. So, it never ceases to amaze, does it, when Councillor Kent brings motions to Council. Um, there are many of us on this side who appreciate an awful lot of what you've done, the fact that you are actually quite a, a, an excellent orator in many ways. Um, uh, and we forever think, oh, maybe he's getting better. Maybe he's getting better. And then you yeah, just let it down by bringing nonsense like this forward. And you see, uh, nonsense in the fact that the amendment actually wants to disagree with the motion itself. So if we were to accept it, we'd have a motion which disagreed with itself throughout, which is balmy in the extreme. Look, we know you've been on the council for, for many years, Councillor Kemp, and would have thought you'd, you'd have learned how to write an amendment um, with all pejorative statements that are going through it as well. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, the term green space gets abused in this city uh, far too much. Uh, anything that anyone wants to, to protect, they, they slap the, the name green space on it. Um, it used to be get, get it called the village green and see whether we can get away with it. Um, uh, the the it. truth is, the truth is that in the face of terrible cuts to our uh, finances and therefore, well you can moan, but it's the truth. In the face of the terrible cuts to our finances and therefore the impacts on our services, We've been managed to move the city from being the worst in the list of <laughs> cities on the indices of multiple deprivation to the fourth worst. Not a massive leap, but a leap that's been made under this administration in the last five years that has never been seen before in this city. You've got to take that into account when you're looking at how we make our decisions within this council. And we make those decisions fully aware that we want to protect the good things in the city, but also we don't want to cope the city in aspic. It's not going to be a memorial to times past. We're trying to build a future city. A city that people want to come to, and they are, despite what you like to think, Councillor Kemp, people are coming to this city. We have a growing population. So, in the face of that, um, the decisions that we make, it's been quite remarkable that we've been able to protect just as much as we have, that in reality we've been able to increase green space uh, in this city. We've been able to increase green space in this city and that we've been able to protect the services that we've been able to protect. We're not helped by having back of the fact packet uh, amendments put forward from councillors who simply should know better. Councillor Kushner. Thank you, my lord. Now, I wasn't going to speak on this motion, but it sticks in the craw to, um, to hear Councillor Ken talk oh, about demanding the Mayor to go and meet any time, anywhere in Liverpool 18. You've been asked and challenged a number of times to come any time, anywhere in a neutral venue in Norris Green because there are residents there that would dearly like to speak to you from the disruption that you caused to their lives from the last eight years. So you name the time, you name the date, we'll arrange the venue and we'll look forward to seeing Pops. you there and answering for your decisions that you made that people are still suffering from today. That's not the <laughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I think it's just worth reminding Council, uh, objecting to this amendment, how committed we are in this administration to green spaces. It's the Lord Mayor who commissioned an independently chaired panel looking at green spaces across the city, a panel which has continued to scrutinise how we do so. Yeah, and someone who's really late. genuinely committed to what we did about green spaces would uh, offer up such an opportunity to the people of Liverpool. Uh, secondly, we have created a net amount of green spaces of all types of sizes, of all types of sizes, and we will continue to do so where the opportunity prevents it. Now, uh, speaking as someone who has been to Cordesones Park, I've never been able to play football with my lad on uh, Beachy Riding Stables. I've never been able to ride my bike uh, through Calder Kids. I've never been able to do any of the public things that I can do in Cordesones Park in those areas, because those areas are fenced off. 
Now I have ridden on the train and I have had a great time doing so. And I'm really looking forward to riding on that same train, in fact on a better train and on a longer track, when the model railway enthusiasts have their new venue. And that's why I support the overall emotion and wish the amendment to fail, because I think the amendment is going to prevent a really good thing from happening in the city. We're going to have a great opportunity to enjoy our parks and our green spaces even more. And I am looking forward to riding on that little uh, that little choo -choo train well, with my kids. And, with, and I really do hope that we do get to ride with hats and whistles as well. So that's why I think we should uh, vote against this amendment and instead support the final motion. Councillor Cranley now. And the health issues of park. Yeah. Well, yes, well, yes, well, yes, yes, well, 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 yes, could I ask members of the public, please, could you please be quiet so that we can listen to what's being said, please? <laughs> I like speaking before now, so I, I don't intend to get emotional. I'll, I'll just state facts. Councillor Oakford, uh, Councillor Ken, sorry, yeah. Councillor Ken was in charge of housing when we had a thing called Anfield Plus, where the council of Liverpool City Council and the football club spoke together for a long time and come up with proposals to detonate the population of Anfield and, and Breckfield on the development of a new club. He never went and spoke to anyone, neither did council officers. The whole idea of this came out by somebody stupidly leaving a piece of paper lying around, which one of the residents got a copy of, photocopy, and it all come out. And councillor Alfred was laughing, I mentioned his name, because we all know who it is, don't we, Steve? Yes, we and do. it wasn't either of us. But <laughs> once that came out, <laughs> but once that came out, we had passionate murder up in Anfield and Blackfield. And you're having it in Walton now. There was, there was a proposal to demolish 1,200 properties. No consultation with the people who live there. No, no consultation in Walton? No either. consultation at all. But we did give the people a chance to speak rather than we're being given here by people who shout out. We gave the people a chance to speak. And one of the first contributions that Councillor Kemp made in their public meetings was to talk about compulsory purchase orders, which caused even more mayhem than the fact that people's properties were going to be pulled down. I was speaking about this last night and I was accused by some of the residents and once this all went ahead and we did get public consultation, the development has now taken place and we have got new properties. But while the Liberal Democrats were in control, that development was slowed right down. We had terrace after terrace of derelict property standing. It was only when this council, the Labour run administration, took over and the housing market with Euro money was stopped by the government that this council found a way around the situation and actually paid for the demolition and the incident to contract with the developers to actually build new properties. And I was accused last night, despite all the goods that's come out of the new property being built, of detonating the community. We never decimated the community. The people who took over the responsibility and decided to demolish 1,200 properties to facilitate Liverpool FC's development, they're the ones that, that caused the demolition. And that was the Liberal Democrats. And I find it absolutely abhorrent for people from... I, I have no problem with open space. I love it. I love open space. Come to the north end of Liverpool and tell us where all the big open parks are. What no talking about to All the big them. open parks compared and to the south end of the city. But I'm saying what we've done in the developments that we've put in Anfield, we've put in green space. We haven't got back-to-back -back terraced houses where the kids can't play. We've put in play areas and we've, we've developed the parks. A couple of weeks ago there was actually um, the introduction of the skateboard park in Everton Park down at bottom. Kids now have somewhere to go and something to play. That wouldn't be achieved if this council didn't have the interest of the community to develop the green space and the play areas for the whole of the city, not just one of them. Can I ask uh, Mayor Anderson back to the big Look, well, Mayor, this is just simply a hijacking for the You know, uh, when he talks about, Councillor Kent, that he's talked about, 
Okay, come along to the public then. It's why the councillors <coughs> representing all this green uh, point out to him, I'm sure Councillor Bradford, like me, remembers the very fact that four times the community asked him to go and invest them in those homes. And four times he declined. The reason why, we all know, because we're long enough in the two. He was sent out to the city by his leader and by the chief executive, get out of town with the mess that you've created. I'm not afraid of any debate, a sensible debate about anything that we do. You know, is, is, isn't it rich that you sit there and you pontificate about what we're doing? What about Stanley Park? <coughs> Was it not the Lib Dems who said, it's built on Stanley Park? But the reality of this Why debate, of Why this debate, that? you've got man with playing fields. We don't know if he's playing fields. Private sector or man with playing fields. But it's you playing politics with it. Because that's what you do. And as far as I'm concerned, the Liberal Democrat lies, which they constantly cheer out in that particular well, area, no, will be answered. Will be answered. But well, fact is, we've got three even Beatsley Stables. Beatsley Stables. We wholeheartedly support the move yeah, so and the continued relationship. Lord Mayor, she really needs to be quiet because the people are now listening. They're trying to say something while she's chairman. Can I, can I can just, just again ask no. members of the public, particularly the lady who keeps uh, shouting out, if you're not going to be quiet, could you please leave the chamber? Yeah. And if you do it again, I'll ask you to be escorted out. Yes. Lord Mayor, I just point out here's a letter from Beatsley Stables. We support the move. Uh, we've got a great continuing relationship and we want to continue our relationship with Liverpool City Council. Uh, and, and it will continue to support this charity. That's Beatsley Stables. We've heard of course from all the kids. And, and the model railway are, are really uh, key to develop and move the site. But you know what? No, I promise you, it's the same. I heard somebody shout out about, about you know, Sefton Meadows. You know, we spent £6.4 million refurbishing the roads around Sefton Park with Prince We've got no money. People need to understand that. We have got to try and develop our city and do things with no money. We're not selling the family silver, as he tries to suggest by getting rid of the green space. It's next to 190 acres of green space. Calderstones Park is protected and will be protected. The fact of the matter is, that piece of land is not available to the public and the organisations desperately want us to help them. And that's what we're doing. Be proud of that and vote for it. My understanding in the uh, Constitution and that the move of the movement also has a right of reply. Okay, in that case, my member on behalf of the opposition parties, I move a card vote on the amendment. Oh, you are right. This is a vote on the amendment. Seven members that need to stand up for a car vote. I thought we were having a car vote. No, I'm not on the main motion. Not on the amendment. I thought we were having a car vote. We're having a car vote, just to be clear, on the main motion. Councillor Jefferson's wigs that are green. We'll do it on the main motion. On the amendment, please. No, Mayor Anderson, I think they've withdrawn that now, and Councillor Kemp has made it. We will, have a, we will have a card vote on the main motion. Yeah. Could I ask members on the amendments, all those in favour? <laughs> all those against?
Any abstentions? Voting is 6 4 against 71, two abstentions, the amendment is lost. Second uh, amendment, Councillor Pro. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, the, Mayor's mo the Mayor's motion really concerned me. Um, it's a concern that the decision to, be, to build on the Heart Hill estate. It's obviously been made before the publication of the Green and Open Spaces Review, before we produced a draft local plan, and with only very cursory consultation. And I think, even though we've heard from the public kids today, and they're very positive about it, I think there are still significant questions regarding some of the institutions who are getting moved off. For example, this morning the uh, Miniature Railway were quoted in Liverpool Confidential calling it tragic to be moved off the land. So there's still big questions there. And just generally speaking, the continued encroachment onto much of this city's green space. It's a major worry to citizens all over, all over the city. Um, and also just the general tone of the motion with the self-congratulation, that's a big concern. We're invited to welcome the initiative by the Mayor and encourage him to seek new and imaginative ways to help sustain our city. Um, the problem with that is that we, along with a huge number of residents around the city, don't think that parceling up green space and selling it off is, is particularly new or even innovative. So we're not calling on absolutely no piece of uh, green space ever to be developed on, but high quality green space, space which is designated under the Unitary Development Plan. That should be an absolute minimum of what gets protected in the city, but we're already seeing that that protection is getting ignored in other parts of the city and land designated as green space is getting built on in Wavertree and West Derby. Um, there are many, many benefits of green space to, to people in this city. Many studies have shown that parks encourage healthy activity, that they act as the lungs of the city, that they're good for mental health. So maintaining our parks makes a vital contribution to public health. And that's all the more important in a city like Liverpool, which has got high rates of respiratory and heart disease. One of the great pull facts of the city is the great parks and the, and the green spaces. They bring people into the city. And they're certainly one of the things that make, make people stay here permanently. If we don't protect them, Liverpool becomes a less attractive place to live. So if we want to sustain the city, we need to, we need to protect our parks, not just build them. So it's time to show a bit of humility, admit that you've got it wrong and you're going down the right track and wrong track on green space. And start listening to people who want proper protection for cherished green space in this city. Is the amendment seconded? Okay. Now, technically, actually, we're, we're out of time for this particular motion. So, can I ask members who wish to speak to be really concise and also keep their comments to the geographical area that we're talking about rather than Bottom Hall Park or anywhere else? Thank you. Well, mate, just a, a point of information, really, for me. You mentioned two pieces of land that, that were selling by Starby and Wave Did you name them? Well, the, 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 the Wave Tree part is the part of Gainsborough Road, and um, that was a piece of green space that had good bi biodiversity and it was a good um, bit of ecosystem. The West Derby Park is a bit of Park Style Lane, the area of green space of Park Style Lane. <laughs> Brownfield sites, both of those sites. Brownfield sites. Not Brownfield. <laughs> both are identified in the industry development plan green space. <laughs> there you are. Can we just get some clarification? Are the sites Brownfield sites? No,
can we can we move? It's been suggested that the question that we put to, to the main motion is that agreed? I understand there's going to be a card vote now. Yeah. Yeah. All those against? The voting was for the amendment 8, against 71, no abstention, the amendment was lost. Back to the substantive motion. Thank you. 
Four. Councillor Wolfson. Four. Councillor Wood. Councillor Woodhouse. Four. All that. Thank you. Voting is 72 for, 6 against, with 2 abstentions, the motion is carried. Thank you. We now move on to motion 11, Houses and Multiple Occupation by Councillors Carol Sun and Liam Robinson. Can I also advise the Council that this will be Councillor Carol Sun's maiden speech. to make my first speech to this chamber. This is an honour to be able to represent the residents of Tewbrook and Stony Croft. I have lived in my community in Tewbrook for more than 30 years. During that time, I've seen with my own eyes how the neighbourhood has changed. It used to be a thriving district centre with a great range of bustling shops that were well supported by the community. A strong sense of community has always been the backbone of the area. Neighbour knew neighbour and people lived in the area their entire lives. And it used to be a very prosperous place. In Eugen Park off West Derby Road, across Stony Crofton and Gregside Park, large Victorian mansions and terraces were built to house our city's growing prosperous classes. And Lord Mayor, it is those large Victorian houses that are the root cause of so many of Tubrook and Stony Croft's ills. Few families these days need an eight-bedroom semi-detached mansion. And so, for understandable reasons, very many of these large houses have been converted into smaller, more manageable sizes. But sadly, far too often, the quality of these conversions is very poor. They are not converted into nice apartments or flats. They are converted into low-quality bedsits or letting rooms, often with shared kitchen and bathroom facilities. It is a fact that the levels of alcohol and drug misuse among tenants is high. I hear it every day from my constituents. The recent need to introduce a street drinking ban in my ward is a testament to these problems. And of course, Lord Mayor, everyone deserves somewhere to live. And that's why Mayor Anderson's pledge before his election to build 5,000 new homes, a target that is set to be massively exceeded. And of course, Lord Mayor, Huge Victorian mansions need to be put back into use because people need homes. But good quality flats, one or two bedroom flats, not poor quality bedsits with a shared kitchen and a shared toilet, <coughs> with 10 or even 15 residents sharing the same facilities. The street drinking